pregame.com. Welcome back to pregame.tv, our continuing coverage of the Belmont Stakes. We're on horse number two, the horse that everybody's talking about, the three to five morning line favorite, California Chrome. Does he make history? This is a horse that's done everything asked of him. Brilliant in the Kentucky Derby. Got a perfect trip in the Kentucky Derby. The Preakness, a soft field, but I think Victor Espinoza deserves more of the credit for the Preakness. His ride in that race, I think, was the difference in him having the win. Yeah, he, you know, this is a horse who in that race was kind of a, like you said, a softer field, but uh, Espinosa put him in perfect position again, and it's not a coincidence when he said he had a perfect trip. His running style kind of puts him in at that position to have the perfect trip, but it's a much tougher field right now, the, the Belmont race, and the reason why it's been 30-something years for a Triple Crown winner is because the Triple Crown winner, winner, he's not taking any races off. I mean, he's running the Derby. He's running the Preakness. He's running the Belmont. And there's only one other horse in this race who's done that, and that's Curl, uh, right on Curlin. So now he gets has to face all General these horses. General A-Rod also ran okay, in and all three. Yep. So now, all of a sudden, he has to face all these fresh horses, and that's what you see in the Belmont a lot of times. That's why sometimes they'll win the, the first two, but now you see a guy skip the Preakness. There's a horse we'll talk about later who skipped the Derby and the Preakness. But saying all that, he's still the horse to beat. He won six races in a row. He knows how to conserve his energy out there on the track. And he, he is the horse to beat, but it's not going to be as easy for him in, in the Belmont. Yeah, a couple things in that grinding uh, three races in five weeks, it takes its toll on horses. But I will say this much in you know, we, California Chrome can't go anywhere without people taking pictures of them and everything else. And now that we have social media the way it is, we're seeing them do everything. And now, if this was a human, it'd be a little different. It's, yeah. it's had to be this big, but yeah. you know. <laughs> the situation being, this horse looks like he hasn't lost any weight. A lot of times you'll see horse drop some weight, you know, over this you right. know five week stretch because it does take its toll. This horse looks as good or better than he did heading into the Kentucky Derby. I heard Sherman now. This is Sherman talking that he thought he gained a little weight and that and that's you know that's saying something that's you know makes him look good because if he got this horse to gain weight uh, with the grueling uh, five weeks he's been uh, been under I've been doing good. it for a long time I don't have any problem with <laughs> the grueling five weeks or the gaining weight the gaining weight <laughs> you look at it in uh, the problem I have with California Chrome it is his race you know to win and it's also his race to lose and but what I mean by that is there's no speed in this race. You know, the other races, we had some clear-cut speed horses. And my concern is he may, by default, inherit the lead. And there has only been two horses since 1984 that have gone wire to wire in the Belmont. Yeah, and, you know, but if he gets it easily, I think Sam Rett will be maybe, maybe out there too. But when you look at this race, I don't see any value at all. A th bet this horse at three to five. And another thing to keep in, in mind here is, and this is going to happen, I've talked to 10 people already who told me they're going to do this. People are going to bet on this horse so they could have the, the souvenir ticket. That's going to even drive his value even lower. And believe me, everybody at that track, anybody, and there's going to be a lot of people at Belmont expecting the biggest crowd maybe ever at the Belmont. They're all going to be betting a ticket on him, whether they like him to win or not. And that's going to drive the value down. Absolutely. Not only the people, just the general people in attendance that do that for a souvenir near keepsake you've got sports memorabilia guys that'll go up there and just buy a ton of tickets for the sole purpose of putting that ticket along with a photo of I California Chrome put it in a frame and then you're going to see it in a sports memorabilia shop for you know hundred dollars I was on I was an eBay I went on eBay specifically today for that reason because I was hearing that the a picture of the the, the race program from the Belmont with a firm and a, and a couple uh, tickets that were bet on them Fifteen hundred dollars was going for on the uh, on eBay. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of people who might uh, take a shot with the with that. And that's why it's 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 great. You're going to get value in the race. And then let's face it, if California Chrome doesn't win the race, even if he runs second, I think your payoffs are going to be good because there's such an inflated pool. So many more people are going to be it. And I'll tell you what, of all the recent Triple Crown. Uh, possibilities that we've had and you know really if you look at it from I think it was from 1997 this will be the ninth attempt for a triple crown 
I don't remember another horse that's had as much hype as California Chrome has had. Yeah, it's a great story, not only, you know, how the horse was bought and the owner and, you know, the $8,000 and everything. So it's been a good story. But he's, he's went out and, and, he, and he's done everything that's been asked of him. He's won six races in a row and he's, he's done everything. This would be a great feat if he could pull this off in the Belmont. The one last concern I have, and like I said, about him inheriting the lead or being too close to the lead in coming off that last turn. Most horses are trained when they're broken and trained when they're on the track. They're given a target to shoot at. In California Chrome, in all of these races, you know, in the Derby, he came from just off the pace, you know, stalking position, and then had a target, ran him down, and went on. My only concern, and now he is a great horse, and he could be so far in front, it doesn't matter, but is if he comes off that turn, and Victor Espinosa makes that move a little bit too soon, and he inherits the lead, and the horse, when he comes out of there, and he looks down the stretch, and there's nobody there, sometimes a horse will go to sleep, so to speak. Sure. Ask real quiet about that. Uh. You know, when Victory Gallup came flying out of the clouds late and Kent DeSormo couldn't get him started back up. A horse naturally will relax, and this is the longest stretch you know, in all of racing, when you come off the turn, you still got a quarter of a mile to go. Yeah, very good point. And, and you know, he has that. We've seen him, you know, he, he responds well to when the jockey, you know, takes a grip of him. But he has that one move. And, when you know, if he's on that lead, when's he going to make that move? It's a, a lot of strategy going on. If he could set the slow fractions, if somehow he does take the lead and he could really slow things down, he might be able to pull away, like you're saying. And then we'll see uh, how he would do down the stretch. All right, California Chrome, he's a three to five favorite. He deserves every bit of it. We'll see later with some of these other horses if somebody can pull the upset. We'll be breaking down uh, Commanding Curve up next. Horse number four, he ran second in the Derby. We'll preview him next on pregame.tv.